Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. For Rex the Jesus. Yes, I am. Mm. Is that the um, theme tune? Theme tune. Mm. Awesome. Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome <laughs> to this week's Connect Group Bible Study. And uh, we are going to be looking at Exodus chapter 33, the passage that you spoke on on Sunday. And uh, as always, it's great if you can have it open in front of you uh, with a pencil in hand and uh don't laugh at me Sorry. and uh kate's gonna read it to us oh. exodus 33 verses 10 to 23 um and what's great about having a pencil in your hand is as you're reading it you can interact with it, with it. in front of you uh you can interact with it and the, the simplest way is any questions you have stick a question mark, question mark anything that just stands out to you to come back to you later put an exclamation mark exclamation mark and it's, it's a long week it's quite and, late uh, <laughs> and uh, anything you can apply put an arrow next to you so um kate why don't you read this to us whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance to their tent the lord would speak to moses face to face as one speaks to a friend then moses would return to the camp but, this, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, but and that I have found favor with, that you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember, this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that, that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me, see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Amen. Amen. So pause there and share any of the questions or the things that stand out to you or anything you can apply to your life. So, so um, I hope that was helpful. Yeah. We are heading into prayer week. So this Sunday we have Vision Sunday and then we are uh, part one and then we're going to pray all week till we get to Vision Sunday part two. Come on. And um and, and this passage is really interesting, isn't it? Because um, it starts with God saying, you're going to go into the promised land. And but I ain't coming. You're not coming with, uh, I'm not going I'm not with going. you. And uh, so that's yeah. why Moses is that. like, uh, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. Mm -hmm. And it's quite easy to kind of skim past that. But this is literally the best day of their lives ever. Yeah. Like imagine... I was trying to think, we were trying to come up with a list. You, you get the all clear, your friends get pregnant, you get promoted, your yeah. team wins the league, your family <laughs> member comes to faith, the sale of your house completes, you pass the exam and then you win the lottery. Aye. The best day ever. Best this, day ever. That is literally Israel on the edge of the promised land. They've 40 come out years of slavery, they've been working towards this. 40 years. To get into their home. And then God says, I'm not coming with you. And they're like, well, we're not going in. Hmm. Um, now, why does he say, I'm not going with you? Hmm? Why does he say I'm not going Oh, because they just worshipped a, a golden cow. And yeah. he's kind of like, uh, just and, it's not and just... then they said, oh, then they said, oh, and this cow brought us out of Egypt. 
just like well you just made it didn't you and so I think God's like but it doesn't it's not like God's having a tantrum it's just like whoa 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 like yeah. you know with the actions their lives and the choices they're saying God we don't want you we reject you we reject you and he's so, like well I'm not going to force myself on you yeah yeah and I think what's interesting about this is that not all time is equal these moments of thresholds moments of change these are key moments where um, if you don't get things right, the implications are a lot bigger than than at other times. But and what I love about this moment. reading is, well, this is a key moment. This is the turning point. And actually, yeah. this is the story of the Old Testament, isn't it? Like, the, like their journey. And, and the point, the point, this, this was such an exciting reading to do because it's like, oh, this is the moment where they begin to do something right. And having, <laughs> well, and having petitioned, yeah. then God says, I'm going to come. Mm. And then Moses still says, <laughs> Moses then says, well, if you don't come well, with don't this, come like, with God's us. like, I've like, no, no, I'm coming. I just said I'm coming. Um, well, you're not listening. <laughs> but it's fascinating. He says, how will anyone know that you're pleased with me mm. and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all other people on the face of the earth? And it's this idea that, you know, there's loads of things we can do, but unless we have God's presence, that is the thing that sets us apart. Like... Mm. Um, because and... lo- you know, loads of people are nice. Loads of people are capable. Loads of people are, you kind. know, kind. And what is it that really sets us apart? It's Jesus' presence with us. Yeah. Mm. And the Lord says, mm. "I will do the very thing you've asked because I'm pleased with you yeah. and I know you by name." Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, that's a promise that the people of God receive uh, as a gift, and we receive it as a gift through Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, let's go into our first set of questions. First one. To share with everyone. Uh, <laughs> what has been the best day of your life? Oh my gosh, this is going to be a good one. And question two, where have you seen people make great sacrifices to follow Jesus? So we're going into prayer week and this passage gives us three prayers that we can pray uh, in prayer week. Um, and be uh, expectant too, I think. Pray and be expectant for. Teach me, mm. be near me. Be near me. And show, show me. me. And um, but before we go I had into little that, actions. did you get it? Teach me, be near me, show me. I don't know whether that came across, but anyway, um, <laughs> if you're that kind of learner. But before we get to that, um, there's some objections, aren't there? Um, to any kind of mm. activity, um, there are. There's normally three objections: theological, theological. emotional, and practical. practical. Um, so, what are some of the theological, emotional, and practical objections to prayer? And how, what does this passage say to us about those? Um, well, theological objections would be, I don't know, I don't feel like we've talked about this. <laughs> what, <laughs> I, um, what you said earlier, like <laughs> it, about, about that, well, we don't oh, do need I to. Oh, do I need to? Yeah. Do I need to, I suppose? And the, well, the answer would be yes, wouldn't it? It would be the short answer. But it is, you know, Moses is like, he, he is seriously intentional. Yeah. He is like... He petitions on behalf of the people and he gets really cheeky. He's like, I want this and make sure you come with me. And oh, you remember this nation? Remember. Imagine telling God to remember something, but we can. He's like, remember this nation is your people and now show me your glory. You know, he's so... Um, and it's all caught up in that verse 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face, face to, to face, face as one speaks to a friend. Okay, so there's theological objections. There's also emotion. What's some of the emotional objections? And how does Moses' interaction help us? Well, that it, is, well, it can be difficult can't it i think yeah it can be hard to be, be honest hard. right and moses is extremely honest um he just says it as it is yeah. it's, it's pretty brutally honest all the way through <laughs> there's that line um i think it's um uh oh i can't remember uh uh it's a catholic priest spoke at the leadership conference a while ago but he says um there's nothing that passes through your heart that's unworthy of bringing oh, before god yeah. and you see that that bluntness and that brutality and rawness in this um, I suppose the other one is the the, the practical objections um, to prayer, and that's it is just tricky. The, yeah, the it's like, things how that am get I in the way. It? Someone said to me the other day, "Oh, prayer, an hour in the prayer room. What what would I? I don't I don't know what I'd say." But actually, a- Angie and the team have made it as easy as possible to pray like next week in prayer week. There's yeah. so much so much direction. It's ne- it's never been easier. So we're trying to overcome And you the see practical. that with the gift of the tent here. The, yes. the place of meeting was a was a was a place. There were times linked to it and, and liturgy, which is just the organizing of your prayers. Yeah. And and so that's what God gave them as a gift there. But it's also what the team have done here. And it is just being being aware that, mm. you know, um 
that that we're affected by yeah. by time and space and resources like that are really really helpful. Well, that's what I find so helpful in prayer week next week. There's a trinity of prayer meetings you can go to. Yeah. There's a morning prayer meeting seven fifteen. There's like a middle of the day prayer meeting, and then there's um, one later on. And I can't remember the time of that one. I think it's nine fifteen. Nine fifteen or nine thirty. Nine fifteen. You'll be early if it's nine thirty. Yeah. <laughs> and you know we get to join in with that. Um, it's never been easier. So those are some of the objections to prayer. And, and then as you look at that and get, it, and really, the, the, the best way to get through them is to try praying and uh, see what happens. But there's three prayers that you drew out on Sunday from this passage that we'd encourage everyone to pray. The first is, teach me. Teach me. Moses says, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favour with you. And it is amazing because, you know, we obey a person, not principles. Yeah. You know, principles, when we do them well, they fuel our pride. And then when we do them badly, they, you know, fuel our shame. The onus is all on us. Whereas if we follow Jesus, you know, he, he did it first. He lived it. He did it. He does it. And he's yeah. showing us how to do the same. And it's not there's no values in principles. But, no. But that's Some not very how good Jesus... good ones on Instagram. That's, that's not how God has chosen to lead us, which is he leads us to a person. And the amazing thing is so with us. we obey a person who is himself obedient yeah um and uh, and there's something about in psalm 73 there's this whole thing about i didn't understand and then i go in i went into the place of meeting mm. and that's as i worshipped um it all comes it, it god speaks to me and it comes together but also it doesn't come together i feel like we come together you know that old that old advert for i think it was tetley's or something that is like oh coming back to me and it's like she came together within herself and it's like actually you yeah. are known when we get into the presence of god we feel we not only know him but we ourselves are known um yeah. you know you said that you know me and it's like we're reminded of that oh, you do know me better than i know yeah. myself oh that's that's yeah that's really interesting that teach me it's not just out there but mm. it's is knowing yourself as well and that mm. yeah so questions three and four what do you want the lord to teach you and do you have any other objections to prayer okay so the next two prayers are show me and be near me so Moses, being very bold says now show me your glory but i just love thinking about how he would say that is it like, now show me your glory? Or is it like, now show me your glory? <laughs> like, you know, our kids, like, now mama, I want to see. <laughs> and, and it's fascinating. And you pulled this out. This is what you said on Sunday, that when a nation <laughs> wants to show its glory, it prays its missiles. missiles. When Apple wants to show its glory, it's new products. An influence wants to show their glory. It's the, the luxury holiday photos. Snaps. Is uh, that you? Oh, me. <laughs> it's it's no, definitely it's not, not you. me. Sorry, it's not you. Um, but it's fear me, buy me, envy me. Mm. And when God wants to show his glory, he says, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass in front of you. Goodness is, is, not, is not self-serving, it's outward. It's received from me. Yeah. Mm. And, it's just be, and then he expands on it. I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. Mm. Uh, and it's like God's glory is in his goodness and his mercy and his compassion. Mm. Uh, for us and then through us to other people as well um yes and it's just um and actually even that is fueled through you know worship and, and prayer and yeah. and you know reading the bible like br allowing god to align our heart with his in his presence and breaking our heart for what breaks his which allows us to serve yeah. um from a motive that is and it's so than different ourself. from anything else we encounter anywhere else mm. um in any other sphere of life and i think that's why we sometimes struggle to believe it mm. and um and that's why we need god to show me yeah. that because we don't believe that and, and we the, can't drag this up out of ourselves yeah. we'll get tired very quickly and he does promise i will give you rest all of this is in the context yeah. of sabbath for a bunch of slaves he's like yeah. rest i want to give you rest but not not that there's no work to be done there is but work, the, you but know, you, you work from rest. From and, a place of rest. And there's that balance and the gift of that as well. And then, and then the last prayer is, be near me. So the Lord says, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. Uh, when my glory passes by, I'll put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I've passed by. And then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, see my back, uh, but my face may not be seen. Um, and that's just fascinating, isn't it? Because we've been told he speaks to him like a friend face to face and we won't see 
his face. But obviously in Jesus, we're told we have seen God. So two places, uh, John 1, uh, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and in the closest relationship has made him known. And in Colossians 1, for the son, for he uh, is the image of the, the invisible, invisible God, God, the firstborn over all creation. Mm-hmm. So there's this sense that... Um, through grace, through the cross, we have seen God through Jesus. But also that this picture of Moses standing before God saying, we want your presence for your people is what Jesus does for us. He stands mm. in the presence of the Father and says, I, I want your presence. I want your spirit for my people. When we pray, come Holy Spirit, we're echoing Jesus' prayer mm. for us, mm. which is go Holy Spirit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's partly how we can know it's answered. Um, but then I suppose the other shape of the cross here is that Jesus gives up God's presence to be with us. To be with us. And he's cut off. And, and the Father turns his face away from Jesus. Mm. Uh, um, so this sort of happens to Jesus so that we mm. can see see God's presence. Yeah. Um, and and in prayer, that is a place near me, isn't it? What, what, what does that mean and how do we... When we go to pray, when we set time aside, are we signalling God? Are we <laughs> yeah, it's it? not like we're pulling God nearer to us, is it? It's that it prayer and worship, they increase our awareness of God already near us and in us and around us. Um, and then stepping into everything that that means. The authority that we carry and that we walk in every yeah. day. I suppose it's that there is a place near me. It's not... Yeah. It's it's um... there's not there's a place near you that I might come to if you <laughs> pray hard enough. No, no, there's yeah. a place near me, and you know we're stepping into that truth that He yeah. is in us. And, near and again, us. it's like that uh, where you may stand on a rock, and again, all the way through, we're told in the New Testament that Jesus is, is that the rock. rock, so that He is the place near mm-hmm. the presence of God. And um, as we enter into prayer, um, we encounter Him, mm-hmm. and. Um, so I think it'd be, it'd be good to pray to finish. Mm. But the, the challenge for you, if you haven't already signed up for a prayer slot, uh, sign up. The... Get a prayer slot in the prayer room uh, and get in your diary prayer week, prayer meetings. Because they're going to be so good. Yeah. And the 4 a.m. slots on the 24th oh, prayer, prayer room. Week, those prayers are worth double. They are. So, uh, he says that with all the authority <laughs> of an ordained man. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, and, um, and you don't have to pray by yourself as well. You can take other people. Take a so um, a question and then pray into this. Where have you encountered God's goodness, his mercy and his compassion? And so share that and then pray for each other. But why don't you pray us out? Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much uh, for today and for this passage, Bible passage, which is just so encouraging to us. I pray that you would equip us now, almighty God, in your presence to pray big, audacious prayers and equip us into this week to really draw near to you and allow you to teach us through prayer as we really intentionally press in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. And see you on Sunday.